Nagar Masai from screenbench.com and today we have Dan Irvish with us and uh, he's an author, he's a filmmaker and he is a producer as well and he has quite an interest in politics that I know with uh, the books uh, he has written and he's also written uh, two guides about how to enter into Hollywood. Uh, both the guides are like uh, one of them was uh, written in 2016, the other was uh, in 2019, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. So uh, I, I just wrote the second edition, uh, just um, uh, it's coming out on July 6th is when it right. first came out. So uh, uh, how did you come up with this uh, beautiful name, uh, Guide the, to there Independent? There you go. Yeah. The Cheerful Subversive Guide, Subversive to, independent guide filmmaking. to Independent Filmmaking. And well, that was... Uh, yeah. That was a description um, that the New York Times gave to myself and, and my colleagues when we started the Slam Dance Film Festival in 1995, uh -huh. all this uh -huh. cheerful subversives. Right. And that's kind of always been my approach to, to making films is that, you know, you have to, on the one hand, subvert the rules, because if you just follow the rules, you'll never get started or you'll never finish. Um, yeah. Uh, but you have to be happy about it the whole time <laughs> and just you have to enjoy the process of, of, of making these films and getting these films out there and finding an audience because if you don't yeah. enjoy it, there's, there's, uh, there's no point doing it. So, so yeah, that's so kind of been my approach. Uh, so you completed uh, the entire guide, like you put out the first version, then the second version, and now uh, you're for the third version, right? No, this is the second. This is the second version of this book, so uh, the second edition. And so this one includes uh -huh. how to how to shoot during a pandemic because my my newest film we shot most of it during the pandemic, one way or another, uh -huh. and uh, and everything else is ju has just been updated, you know, since since. Okay, so the, you updated uh, up, uh, updated it according to the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, lots that's of that's a smart but. move, and uh, <laughs> I believe that's the need of the time yeah, yeah yeah exactly exactly and and because i think even post pandemic a lot of the rules for how to conduct yourself on set are, are going to still stay in place True. um you know moving forward uh -huh. so uh dan um you have a you know pretty diverse uh, diverse interest uh your writing your guiding your also uh, screenwriting, you're producing. So how does that all come together? And where does, the, where, where does that all come from? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I think I always have a strong writing background. And, uh -huh. and I think if you want to make films, you, everything always starts with the script anyway. Yeah. Um, but, but not just writing the script, but writing the business plan and the prospectus and the True. and writing updates to your backers and and all of that uh involved writing and and i think part of it is i started to write articles uh for like filmmaker magazine and variety and places like that uh -huh. um about the process that i was right. going through because i i get so many calls from other filmmakers asking for advice and i was right. like okay well let me put this into an article and then, exactly and then i had enough articles i was like oh let me put it into a book <laughs> and yeah, um and, and share the knowledge that i've yeah and 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 i just like to share the knowledge that i've picked up along the way about how to make um you know specifically low budget independent films yeah you you do have like more than 30 movies under your belt which is like <laughs> well, I think it's only about a half dozen that I've really directed, but uh, but yeah, but I've, but I've you helped have out some, some sort of part in them. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I did my yeah. research. So yeah, <laughs> Thank I, you. I, I was stunned, man. Seriously. So yeah. Yeah, uh, it's surprising so, it's that many. Yeah. yeah. So uh, your latest uh, movie uh, was uh, uh, animation outlaws. So what's that about, and how that? Oh. How, how did that? Uh, <laughs> You know, concept come. No, no, no. So that one, I'm just a cameo in that. It's uh -huh. uh, that's a documentary about my friend um, uh, Spike from uh, Spike and Mike's um, uh, a animation, and and they've done screenings at Slam Dance at the festival. Right. 
So um, I think there's a scene in there where I'm introducing um, a screening of, of his film. So that's, a, that's my entire part. And then, and then we actually showed the film at the festival last year. So uh -huh. that was yes, that. That's cool. And uh, what about Open House? That oh, Open a, House. That, that, that's a very fun, fun movie. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so that one was a real estate musical that we shot in 2004. Uh, with Sally Kellerman, who's an Oscar nominee, and uh, and Anthony Rapp uh, from Rent, and um, and it was a very low budget film. We shot it for like forty thousand dollars, all including post production. Um, but then the interesting thing was, it's, it's a long story, but we uh, we were eligible for an Oscar for best original musical, um, which is a category that they've had on the books but had never activated, and we but we needed five. They would only activate the category if there were five films eligible and there were four films that year including our own film so then along with a, a couple friends we went off and we made a fifth film just to fill out the category uh and we shot it in germany and um but the trick was to not make it too good because then it would take votes away from open house so we actually had nine days to make a bad german musical so it was like a real life version of the producers. Uh, so that was fun. And they actually, they changed the rules of the Oscars because of, uh, because of our movies. Oh, that's cool. So where does your interest in politics come from? Well, I, ma I majored in political science in college. I went to a college that didn't have a film program. So I was like, all right, I'll do political science. And then, um, and then after college, I, I worked in Washington, D.C. as a speechwriter for a senator for a couple of years. So was and, it like uh, that uh, young blur bring, uh, wanting to bring in change uh, to the country and all those kind of ambitions? <laughs> well, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of that, for sure. You know, you get, uh, but once you start working in it, you realize you can't quite change the world. But, uh, but I was lucky. So I was you can always make it a bit, better place, right? Absolutely. Yeah. No. And I was proud of, of the work that I was able to do uh, when I was in Washington. And then but then I decided to uh, to go to film school. Uh, but then I've come, I've come, as you mentioned, I've come back to politics a few times in my career. And the, and the film that I'm finishing now, the feature I'm doing now, it's called 18 and a half. And that's about yeah. the Nixon Watergate scandal. And uh, right. it's a it, it's a fictional film. It's it's all fictional characters, but it's kind of in that world. Of, uh, it's a, of historical fiction in, in that world of Watergate. And, that, and that's been a lot of fun. And that's what we're finishing up right now. Uh -huh. well, I would be excited to watch it. You would watch it. Thanks. Yeah. So when is it coming out? <laughs> well, we're just literally working on the color correction right now and then um, submitting it to festivals for the fall. And uh, so I think so one way or another, it'll, it'll be in festivals in the fall and then distribution you know, maybe in the spring, um, sort of depends what happens. Um, uh, but that's, that's more or less the plan. Right. So, um, basically I'd like to tell you about our platform screen bench. Sure. Yeah, please do. Uh, yeah. So we're a group of, uh, individuals, uh, spread all around the world. Uh, we don't, uh, actually meet, in fact, I, I haven't met all of my team. We've mm -hmm. been working for a long time, but uh, everybody's in a different country. But mm -hmm. our uh, goal is the same, is that uh, as movie lovers, as, a, you know, entertainment lovers, uh, we do face a lot of, uh, what do you call, geo-restrictions and uh, problems to watch uh, uh, certain uh, series or movies which are not available in, let's say, uh, certain countries. Uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's just not name a country uh, and make it <laughs> make it dirty. So the point is, uh, we provide all sorts of uh, streaming solutions to the readers, uh, be it how to use your device and connect it to, you know, be it your Roku thing or uh, if you want to watch American Netflix, which is the, the best version of Netflix, uh, mm -hmm. say you're in a country where Netflix library is really, really small, and you just don't have anything to watch. So what, you, uh, what you're going to do is uh, follow the steps that we 
guide in our uh, blogs and uh, you can access American, Japanese or any region's Netflix library and access those channels, those titles and uh, watch them anywhere in the world. And it's not just Netflix, uh, there are a lot of, you know, uh, channels, sports channels and things like that, which are not globally available. Uh, let's say, like Disney Plus launched and it took quite a long time to uh, be, you know, globally present. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we provided them, uh, we pro pro provided the audience solutions to how to bypass this geo restriction and mm -hmm. watch uh, Disney Plus anywhere in the world. So yeah, that's how we work. Uh, uh, same with HBO Max, like it gradually uh, launched uh, in countries. Uh, it, it was first uh, launched in the US, of course. So there are a lot of people who want to watch it in Canada and Pakistan, and, you know, all over the world be it mm -hmm. Iran, be it Canada. So that's where we come in and provide solutions. This is what's been pitched to us. And then we okay. have movie reviews, we have mm -hmm. uh, entertainment news if something uh, you know happens uh, and every day something happens in Hollywood. You know? Yeah, yeah, of course. The, the Johnny Depp thing, the Amber Heard thing and you just name it and there are, you know, so many uh, news pieces every day coming up regarding Hollywood. So we covered all that for fans who are like genuinely really, really interested in uh, entertainment, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. exactly what we do. So all okay. the writers are scattered across the globe. Uh, someone's in Canada, well, someone's in uh, Morocco. Uh, someone's in Malaysia. So all these, um, uh, all of our group uh, basically communicates via the internet. And we decide we have these, uh, meet, uh, you know, Zoom meetings and we uh, kind of digitally manage all this without physically meeting our partners. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, rent the site uh, to promote entertainment and to assist people like us who just generally love movies, who just genuinely want to, you know, sit on a beanbag, uh, have some popcorns and watch movies. And oh, that's great. Just, just, just not do anything else in life. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's what Screen Binge is all about. Good, good. Fantastic. Yeah. And where, where, are you, where are you calling from right now? I am in Pakistan right now. Okay, great, yeah. great. Yeah. Any questions about Pakistan? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Any other any other questions for me? Uh, what are you got? Um, Dan, uh, what's your? Uh, I know you're uh, low on time, so I won't uh, push it further, but. Uh, uh, if, is there anything that you want to, you know, say to your fans, like the audience, <laughs> or, you know, if you say that you don't have any fans, because a lot, because <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of celebrities are like very humble and they say, yeah. we don't have any fans. Uh, I, I don't think I'm famous and stuff like that. So, of course, you're famous. People know you. You've done your know, books, your guides, and then there's your uh, political and um, uh, say with your uh, book uh, and articles and all. So any message, anything that you would like to, you know, say to the world, let's, let's just not limit it to your audience, to the world. Yeah. Uh, no, I think just, um, you know, with, with the pandemic and with, with uh, everybody stuck at home for the last year, exactly. um, it'll be interesting to see if, if people can return to, to watching movies and theaters and going to film festivals, and which, which I, I, I'm a big fan of all, all film festivals because I think that's really where 
filmmakers can can meet an audience in person and, and listen to the reaction of an audience to a film. Uh, while it's great to have people watch a film uh, sitting in a beanbag in their home, uh, I'd rather have a whole room filled with beanbags, you know. <laughs> Uh, and and that way you know you can share in the laughter or the cries or the or the the reaction to the film. And I think that's the thing that is um, most unique about a film compared to a TV series, for yeah. example. You don't you don't binge watch a show with a hundred strangers in a room, but you watch a movie with with a hundred strangers yeah, in a room. That is so true. The, the experience is very different. That's a and very, very, God, that's a very unique insight. I've never, <laughs> I've never thought about it that way. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so anyway, so I it, it'll it'll be nice when we can return to having that experience um, in true. theaters around the world. And uh, so I'm hopeful with my new film, eighteen and a half, that uh, the you know to to screen it around the world at festivals. Uh, um, you know, we've got uh, uh, we've got a great Brazilian soundtrack on this one, and and people work on the film around the world in mexico we had artists uh, musicians and vfx artists and that was actually the nice thing about a pandemic was you could work sort of normalize working remotely so you literally could work with people uh there was a guy in pakistan that was helping out my composer a little bit so yeah. things like that um i think are, are great to have that international wow. cooperation in wow. in making the films not just watching the films so, but as far as myself, uh, people want to follow what I'm doing, just go to my website at danmervish.com, D-A-N-M-I-R-V-I-S-H.com. Or I'm, I'm on Twitter a lot too, but, um, and yeah, keep an eye out for the new film. It's, it's got a great cast. Uh, Bruce Campbell uh, is in it. He plays Richard Nixon, uh, or the voice of Nixon, and John Cryer, and and uh, Bondi Curtis Hall and John Magaro from First Cow. It's a it's a fun film, um, and I think people will like it. So, so, but thank you, thank you for everything you are doing and your colleagues are doing. Um, you know, it takes uh, people to write about films for for us to have them and to make them. Yeah, because we do cover uh, movie reviews and you know yeah. everything related to entertainment. Good, good. Well, I'll keep you posted when the film is ready. Of course, please do. Uh, sure. And and then I'll take more of your time. And, <laughs> Absolutely. And have, That's fine. Have a big, big ass interview with you. <laughs> All right. Sounds great, Mahi. All right. All right. All right. Thanks take care, so, man. So much for your time, man. Thank sure. You so my pleasure. Much. All right. Good luck. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good day.